I am so excited to be making this video. Hey guys, it's Courtney. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. So yeah, the title says it all. Um, I'm getting a breast reduction or you watching this video, I've already had it done. So basically this video is just going to be like a vlog style of me getting the surgery done. Um, I'm going to spend the first half of this video like explaining why I got it done and the steps to get insurance to cover it and all of that because I know the people who are watching this video most likely are looking for that information. For those of you not looking for that info, I'll have timestamps in the description box so you can just skip around. But I want to explain first why I wanted to get this done. If you are looking to get a breast reduction, you already relate to how I feel about this. Like. You already know what it's like, but I guess I'll just start from when I was really young. I developed pretty early. I guess I was in fourth grade. I had fairly large breasts for that age and they developed really fast. So I had stretch marks all over and at the age you're kind of smaller. So I remember my stretch marks would start like up here and I would have to wear like super high necked things, which is something I still do today. Hello. The boys on the school bus would always be like, why do you have scratches all over your chest? It looks like you got scratched by a tiger. So I always had these stretch marks and that was like the first time I got really self-conscious about my chest. As the years went on, they kept growing and growing and growing. And since I was like 19, 18, 19 is when I had a really hard time finding bras that fit. I don't like typical bras. I really like them to be like full coverage, but really kind of suck them in because I wear loose fitting clothes that just hang over my body to kind of hide them. So when the bras make my boobs look bigger, the shirts hang farther away from me. So they just make me look extra heavy. I'm someone who is very picky with bras and these bras I have worn since I was literally 19 and I'm 24 and I still have them. These were really good, <laughs> but they were never the right size. I would always have like spillage over here or when I would bend over like the top would fall out. And then I found Third Love and I got resized and they said I was a 36G. I bought the bra and again, it made my breasts look way too big. So this is it. This is how you guys are gonna see how large and in charge my breasts are. This is the bra that I got. It's been so frustrating finding bras all my life. So now on to like the main issue of why I'm getting this surgery. So if you're someone who also um, is wanting a breast reduction, like I'm assuming most of you watching this video would, um, you understand how heavy they are. <laughs> They're so heavy and it causes a lot of pain. And that's why a lot of people, you know, seek out a breast reduction. It's not necessarily for cosmetic reasons. It's more like to relieve themselves of pain. So for me, I have been getting diagnosed with chondritis a lot. It's like inflammation in the wall of your chest. And my doctor said it could definitely be related to like the size of my breasts. And that was like a year ago. And I've been consistently having the same issue. I have a lot of shoulder pain and pain all in this area. And it's related to the heaviness of my chest. So I have been researching and getting a breast reduction for several years. It's always been in the back of my mind since I was really young. Um, but now that I'm approaching 25 and you know, at 26, you're off your parents' health insurance and then you have to find your own. I'm always scared that like my health insurance when I get my own won't cover that. So I wanted to do it now. So I did a lot of research on surgeons in my area. I live near New York City. So it's obviously gonna be a very expensive area to get this surgery done but you know the best doctors are also here so I did a lot of research and I looked at a lot of before and after pictures and saw which ones I wanted my results more to look like and I ended up finding Dr. Norman Rowe online and I read all of his reviews and they were amazing. I looked at before and afters and I was so excited. And another thing that really struck me about his work is that he doesn't typically use the anchor incision which you'll see like on a lot of people who get implants or reductions. It's where they go around the nipple down and then there's like a huge scar underneath the breast. So it looks like an anchor. 
He uses a lollipop incision, so instead of the bottom part, it's just around the nipple and down. So yeah, I was really interested in going to him. So this is where I'm gonna talk about how I'm going about getting insurance to cover this. Like I said, I know a lot of you watching this are probably looking to get a reduction, so you're probably interested in hearing the steps that I had to go through. But if you don't care, I'll leave those timestamps in the description box and you can just skip around. So when I made my consultation with Dr. Rowe, they told me that I had to get a referral from my um, GP and also get a referral or medical necessity letter from a pain management specialist. And they gave me the info on the pain management specialist um, so I could just book an appointment with him. And what I did was I booked the pain management specialist appointment at 8 a.m. and then I booked the consultation at 10:15 a.m. because it's both in New York City but I did want to get like a good chunk of it out of the way in one day so I did this two days ago and that was on June 14th I went to the pain management specialist and I you know filled out the paperwork about where I was having pain obviously it's like all up here like literally everywhere and when I met with the doctor he did some tests like physical tests and he basically told me that I'm super hypermobile in all of my joints and that the heaviness of my chest is actually causing a rotator cuff issue in my shoulder which is really interesting because I've been having a lot of elbow pain now so like my elbow is trying to compensate he said that the pain like will go up here throughout the day it'll like go up into the shoulders and then it'll go up into your neck and then eventually it'll go all the way up here and it'll come into your forehead area and I said I have terrible migraines especially like behind my eyes and my forehead right here is that from my boobs and he was like yeah it's definitely making things a million times worse so that was just amazing to know that like my migraines are coming from this extra weight on my chest the fact that they could go away when I get the surgery just is making me so happy like that'll make it so worth it because I suffer with migraines I get them at least once or twice a week he was like typing up the medical necessities letter and I was just sitting there thinking and I was like does acupuncture help with TMJ and he went Courtney you have TMJ you just completed the pain puzzle I have a TMJ on this side of my face. I've had my jaw locked for literally a year and a half at one point. Usually throughout the day, like I don't open my mouth very much. It's not like it's popping. It's just that it gets so tired and sore. And he said that the pain goes up from your shoulder up here and radiates all over your head. The fact that my TMJ is also from my tits is like mind blowing. So all of this stuff that I was telling this doctor was like building my case for the insurance company to give coverage for this surgery. So from the doctor's office, I walked over to my consultation. The office was so nice. Um, Simone is the patient coordinator there and she's just so lovely and made me feel so calm. So when it was my turn to go into the office, I sat with one of the nurses, I guess they're nurses, I'm not really sure what they're called there. But she was basically asking about my chest size, um, my height and weight and just stuff like that. And then she took some pictures of my chest to send off to the insurance company. So when Dr. Rowe came in, he took measurements of my chest and then he put marks on my chest. He put marks underneath my breasts and then like in the middle, like probably where my nipple would be um, or where they should be. <laughs> and then he said like bra cup sizes are never a good way to talk about size but it is a good way to just have a visual and he was like so like what size are you and if you could walk out of here today with a new size like what would you want to be and I said like you know I'm like a 36 G give or take like depending on where I'm going but if I could have any size I would love to be like a full C and he was like okay so you want to be like relatively small then and it was really cool to hear about how he goes about using this lollipop incision so when you get an anchor incision it'll go from like way over here to like way over here so he was saying that if you ever wear like a low cut dress you'll be able to see that scar come up so he does do the anchor incision but his the scar on the bottom would be like this compared to like and he told me the differences between the results that i would get with each incision and he said the way that he does breast lifts because i do need a lift as well like pretty big um that i will never need another lift ever again in my life even after i have children and after i breastfeed i'll still be 
the same as when I got my surgery done. So that made me feel so excited. I was like, yes, I'll be able to keep these bad boys for the rest of my life. He said that with the lollipop, he's able to remove like, I'm not, I'm just gonna guess cause I don't remember like 50% of the breast tissue. Um, but if he were to do the anchor, he could also liposuction through the bottom incision and I could get 70% of my breast removed. He also said that he doesn't remove the nipple and like reattach it like some surgeons do, which obviously causes like a huge chance that you'll never like be able to breastfeed or that the nipple could die and fall off. The only thing that he said could happen is like I might lose some sensation there. They wanted me to go and get an echocardiogram and an EKG before I got the surgery just to make sure like I was safe to get surgery and so I wouldn't die. <laughs> And then I would also need to get a medical necessities letter from a chiropractor or a physical therapist and get medical clearance from a doctor. He then told me a bunch of different things about like insurance and how they almost always get insurance to cover these surgeries. And he also reassured that like if anyone could get it covered, like he could do it. So I just have a lot of faith in them and I'm praying that this all works out because otherwise this video means nothing. <laughs> we booked the surgery for July 3rd. That's in like two weeks. Ah, I'm so excited, sorry. <laughs> and then she was like, you know what? Are you free right now? Um, because I can call up doctor and see if they can get you in for an appointment right now for you to get your echocardiogram and EKG. So when she was on the phone with them telling them about me, I was walking over to their office because it was so close. And then I got both of those done. Um, so tomorrow is June 17th and I go back to the city in the morning to get my medical clearance done to send over to the surgeon who will then package everything up, send it to the insurance company, and I'll hear back super, super soon about what they'll cover. Now I know that sounds like a lot of different things that are going on, but it really happened like all in one day. So let me recap for those of you who are trying to get insurance to cover this. And I have um, United Healthcare Oxford. So if you have the same, you might go through the same steps. You'll probably go through the same steps regardless. But I needed a referral from a GP, a medical necessities letter from a pain management specialist, I needed an echocardiogram and an EKG, but you probably don't. I needed a medical necessities letter from a chiropractor or a physical therapist, and then medical clearance from a physician. So once all of that is done, then they send it to the insurance, and the insurance will then say what they are gonna pay. I didn't ask like what the total cost of the entire surgery is without insurance. I'm really interested to know and I will be asking that. So the way that Dr. Rowe's office does it is they are an out of network surgeon. So they get the insurance company to approve it for out of network and then they go in to make an exception for it to be in network. So that's what they try to do. So I know what the maximum for in network and out of network that I would pay would be. So I just wanted to show you what they look like in like a normal shirt. And this is how they look. They are just like too heavy um, for me. I don't know, I can't really handle it. So I did want to give you a little update. My insurance actually approved the procedure. I am so freaking happy I'm getting this covered by insurance. I just had to pay the deductible and that was in network and I had to pay $2,500 out of pocket. But yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. Today is Thursday, my surgery is on Wednesday. So I have less than a week. Today is the day I am feeling, I don't really feel anything. Um, I'm feeling thirsty, which I drank a lot of water cause I was expecting to be thirsty. So this kind of hit me hard, um, but yeah, I'm, I guess I'm excited, a little nervous, but it hasn't really hit me, so it'll hit me when I get there, I'm sure. So yesterday was my surgery. Um, I'm still a little out of it, to be honest, but so far, so good. The pain is way worse than I expected, um, and I have a pretty high pain tolerance. I noticed that a lot of people on YouTube when I watched their videos, they said the pain was like, there really wasn't. And I kind of feel the same way, except I have drains. I don't, if you want to see, like, you can keep watching. If not, close your eyes for like two seconds. But the drains, like there's some blood right here, but they just hang here. So that's where I'm feeling a lot of the pain is like on the sides. 
and also a little bit underneath because he did do a little bit of liposuction down there which he said is what's going to cause the pain um so i have been taking my pain medicine which i really didn't expect myself to be doing but yeah it's been it's been kind of hard and as for the surgery i kind of thought that i would be super super nervous like when the time came but even on the way there, we had a car service, even on the way there, I felt like it wasn't hitting me yet and it literally never hit me. Like, obviously I got into the OR and it, I was like, this anesthesia better freaking work because that's like my biggest fear is like anesthesia not working. I remember the anesthesiologist, she was behind me when I was laying down on the table and she goes, okay, here's the tequila. And I was like, okay, make it really strong on the rocks. <laughs> And that was it that's all i remember i remember them putting like the oxygen thing on me and i woke up um and i was done i remember being super itchy and then yelling at me like courtney don't don't hate yourself you're gonna hurt yourself and then my mom finally came down she came down and just sat with me and the nurses until i was ready to leave um so i was there i guess from like nine until two ish 2 30 maybe i have to kind of like hunch forward because if i stand up straight like the tubes kind of move so this is what they look like with my shirt he told my mom when i was um waking up he said that he got me to a full c so to start i was either a g or an h and now i'm a c cup so i'm really excited to see them i have my post-op appointment tomorrow because it's the fourth of july today i'm praying i can get the drains out but i just wanted to like update you guys on how it all went um it was really hard to sleep last night i slept um with this like pregnancy pillow thing and like a bunch of pillows like stacked up but yeah i'll keep you guys updated uh i would never do it again <laughs> but yeah i'm really excited when i was waking up and my mom was with me he said i don't know if you remember this but right before we started the surgery you said make me as small as you can <laughs> so i guess he did and i'm really thankful hey <laughs> So it is Saturday. My surgery was Wednesday and I just wanted to kind of update you guys on how the recovery is going because I feel like a lot of people that I've like a lot of these videos that I've watched I feel like a lot of people kind of fluff over the recovery part of this whole thing um, and just go straight to the results. So I did want to talk a little bit about how I'm doing. So let me just say that this recovery is a lot harder. Than i expected it to be like i said a lot of people kind of fluffed over it in their videos i think because i have drains and a lot of the people who i watched never had drains the drains are the worst part so if you are someone who's getting this surgery and you have drains expect that to be the most painful part it's because you literally have tubes coming out of your body and like the spot where they're coming out of is what really hurts like like trying to get comfortable and not having like certain things like push on them like if you're laying down your pillows might push on those spots once they come out i'm sure it'll be fine i get them out hopefully on monday i thought i was getting them out yesterday but i wasn't so i was really bummed another thing about this recovery that i wasn't expecting is how emotional i've been this has been my sleeping savior it's a pregnancy body pillow and it just kind of holds my sides and I put ice packs on the sides of my breasts as I sleep so it kind of like holds them in place and I have a bunch of pillows stacked up but I just wanted to show you that I do really recommend something like this if you're getting the surgery I'll link it down below it was only like $45 so I did record a little bit the day after surgery I don't know how coherent I was but I do want to talk a little bit more about like what I remember from the surgery so so I started out as a 36 H cup and he says that when my swelling goes down I will be a 36 C so I am so excited um this is how they look except I have ice packs in my boobs right now I have ice right here and right here but I guess I'll take them out okay so this is how they look they're so cute and tiny this one is a little bit bigger than this one it's a little more swollen and it's a lot more bruised and i do feel the most pain in this one 
Okay, so this is my last update as for my breast. So it has officially been three weeks since my surgery and I'm feeling a lot of things mentally and physically. <laughs> so I wanna say, I have not really heard many people talk about the different pain that you will feel during the healing process. So from about a week and a half after the surgery to about the two and a half week mark, there were some very interesting sensations going on, so I just want to mention that. You can literally feel the... How do I describe this? You can literally feel things mending back together, and it's a very strange feeling. It's like sharp, and it stings, but it's also aching, and it's like you can really feel it mending. It's like a very strange feeling. You can also feel underneath your nipple area, um, a lot of sensation. So for example, my right one has been fine. My left one has kind of been like hiding in its little safe space. It hasn't really come out, but I know it's working because underneath there, when it's really cold or I get the chills, I can feel the sensation, but nothing physically is happening to that nipple, if you know what I mean. The other one reacts fine. So that's another part of the healing process that I didn't really expect. Um, like I expected if there wasn't anything going on, like I wouldn't feel any sensations, but I do underneath. It's very strange. I want to mention that when I had the drains, if you have drains, just know that that's the hardest part. Once they're out, it's all uphill from there. You have to milk them. And that's something that I didn't do um, the first few days until my follow-up appointment I was told I had to do that because that's like getting out clogs and I'm going to show some before and afters in a second but I wanted to also mention um what I'm feeling now so I have steri strips still all around my nipple area and a little bit below I took them off the bottom this is a little bit TMI this whole video is TMI but I'm just gonna let you know because if you are looking for the surgery these things can happen so I went to the city one day and on the train home, I was like, someone really smells, <laughs> like something smells really bad. And when I got home, I took a shower, I went to bed and I woke up in the middle of the night and I still smelled that smell. And I got kind of nervous um, thinking that it was like my chest. When I woke up in the morning, I went to take a shower. I scrubbed everything nice. I got out of the shower again and I still smelt it. And I was like, okay, this is the Steri strips. So on the bottom, they were coming off anyway. So I just kind of pulled them off and I could see some pus coming from the incisions where they connect. So if this is the bottom, the part where it connects here, that's where the um, drains were. So there was like kind of like a healing hole there anyway. There was a lot of pus and not so much on the other side, but just a little bit. So I had to send pictures to my doctor's office and they said it's nothing really to worry about, but the stitch that was holding my drains in place, they're supposed to dissolve, but that one wasn't dissolving. My body was kind of rejecting it. So that's what was happening. It's still the hanging out now. I have to wait until my appointment in a few days to get that removed. Um, honestly, I would pull it out now if I knew that it was just a little piece. I don't know if it's like a whole thing connecting everything together because it's literally right at the opening. So I don't know. I feel like it could come out on its own, but I'm just having to keep that really clean and I'm putting Neosporin on it so that it's like healing nice. But yeah, there are little complications like that that can happen and that are probably going to happen. So just be aware of what your body is telling you. Those steri strips were already coming off, so I should have taken them off. But if you see anything that is like a little concerning to you, always call your doctor. It's so much better to just be reassured that everything's fine rather than possibly ending up with an infection later on. So I wanna show you some before and after clips that I took of me wearing clothes that I could never wear before. And I could wear them. That's not saying like I couldn't wear them, but it's just I felt super uncomfortable wearing these items because they just made me feel huge in my chest like they didn't i just didn't feel like i was being flattered in any way and now i can totally wear these things and not feel self-conscious about my chest so i'm not wearing a bra right now i am wearing like a tank top but i took the sleeves off but this is how i look right now without a bra they're still super swollen and sore 
but I, I could never dream of doing this before. So it's just really exciting. Even though I am in a lot of pain now, just healing wise, the relief I have had from my pains before, like my back pain, my neck pain, my migraines, my TMJ, I have not had a single instance of pain in any of those areas since the surgery. And it's immediate. I haven't had a single migraine. I always had had the urge to crack my back all the time. There's literally no cracks that happen when I do that now. I don't have any need to do it. I would always crack my neck. I have no urge to do that either. So I have had no issues with my TMJ. It's like, it has been so, so, so worth it. So if you're someone out there who has struggled with these things, I 1000% recommend at least getting a consultation somewhere, seeing what they can do for you. Try to get your insurance to cover this. Um, I did find out how much it costs. It is roughly $35,000 at least in New York City. So I don't know who would pay that out of pocket. If you live in my area, I recommend getting a consultation with Dr. Norman Rowe just because they are so confident that they can get insurance to cover your surgery. So if you have any questions about the the surgery, the healing, I've pretty much mentioned everything I can think of, but if you can think of anything that I missed, let me know in the comments down below and I'll answer you. You can always message me on Instagram. I'll get back to you there. But yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy. I will update you probably around month two, just to show you like how the scars are and how the healing process is and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give this a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you like mystical millennial type of things, be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is kind of not my genre. Yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video if you stick around. <laughs>